In the heart of the Old West, under the scorching sun and barren landscapes, there existed a deadly gunfighter named Jeremiah Kane. Jeremiah, who was known far and wide for his quick draw and deadly accuracy, had a reputation that made even the bravest souls quiver in fear. One sweltering afternoon, Jeremiah found himself in a dusty, dying day-by-day mining town known as Empty Gulch, New Mexico. Sitting at a poker table inside the local saloon, fate, it seemed, had dealt him a hand he could never have anticipated. Jeremiah's keen eyes caught the glint of an unusual silver dollar as it lay among the poker chips in the pot. Called to put up or fold on the biggest pot of the day, Jeremiah questioned the coin that had just been thrown into the pot to call it right. It did not look like any legal tender coin he had ever seen before what may have been some ancient emperor on one side and some text on the other, written in a foreign language that surely no one in this town would have been able to translate. The cowboy at the table who offered it up as collateral swore up and down, regardless of where it came from, that it was pure silver. Jeremiah played his cards with a calculated calm. His thoughts focused more on the mysterious coin than the game itself. Jeremiah was holding aces and kings, a fantastic hand. He raised the pot again. The cowboy looked at his hand. He had a royal flush, a winning hand over virtually any hand. No poker player in the history of poker ever threw away a royal flush. But that is exactly what this cowboy did. He folded, as if his goal was to lose the pot. The hand and the coin now belonged to Jeremiah. He gathered his winnings and looked for his next opportunity to separate the locals from their hard-earned and fought money. The true test of fate awaited him beyond the poker table. A shooting competition had been arranged in the heart of town, with bottles and targets set up as the marksman's prey. Jeremiah, along with a group of other sharpshooters, took their positions, each trying to outdo the other in a contest of skill. As the dust swirled and the crowd gathered, the competition intensified. Shots rang out, shattering bottles and sending targets into splinters. But as the competition reached its climax, it became clear that the contenders were evenly matched, their accuracy unparalleled. A tense hush fell over the crowd as they observed the deadlocked competition. Jeremiah Kane, never one to back down from a challenge, proposed a daring twist. He produced the silver coin from his pocket. It glinted impressively in the sun. Why shoot at bottles and targets when we can aim for something smaller, something that will truly test our metal? With that, he offered the cursed coin as a target that would be tossed into the air for each competitor. The crowd murmured in surprise, their eyes fixed on the coin. One by one, the sharpshooters took their shots at the silver dollar as it danced through the air. Each marksman missed, their bullets striking empty air or the unforgiving earth. Jeremiah, however, remained unwavering. As the coin ascended, he took careful aim, his focus unbroken. He squeezed the trigger and a deafening shot rang out. The silver dollar was struck with uncanny precision, the bullet hitting it square in the coin's head profile. The impact sent the coin into a violent spin, and then with a malevolent twist of fate, the bullet ricocheted back toward Jeremiah. Time seemed to slow as the ricocheting bullet found its mark. It struck Jeremiah Kane squarely in the forehead, a ghastly thud making his untimely demise. His lifeless form crumpled to the dusty ground, and the malevolent coin rolled away seemingly undisturbed by the chaos it had wrought. Amidst the shocked gasp of the onlookers, the cursed silver dollar lay on the ground, tainted by yet another life it had claimed. It was then that a man named Mr. Jasper, the local general store merchant, approached, his eyes filled with a mix of curiosity and trepidation. He looked around carefully to see if anyone had seen where the coin had come to rest, then picked up the sinister coin from the blood-stained earth. Little did he know that he was about to be ensnared by its ominous curse. Mr. Jasper, the local general store merchant, he was a simple man content with his quiet life until the day he possessed the coin. The instant his gnarled fingers touched the silver dollar, a shiver ran down his spine. 
He couldn't explain the strange compulsion that took hold of him, but he was overcome with an inexplicable obsession. Mr. Jasper locked himself in the back room of his store, examining the coin for hours on end. He became increasingly paranoid, convinced that someone would steal his newfound treasure. He boarded up the windows and doors, isolating himself from the outside world. The once thriving general store fell into disrepair as Mr. Jasper's obsession grew. Days turned into weeks and the townsfolk grew worried. They could hear his mad ramblings and desperate cries for help from behind the boarded up windows. But every attempt to rescue him ended in failure as the doors remained locked tight. One fateful night, the air in the store grew heavy with an otherworldly presence. The temperature dropped and the walls seemed to close in on Mr. Jasper. He clutched the cursed silver dollar as he lay in bed, muttering to himself in gibberish, trying to ward off whatever malevolent force he believed was after him. But his pleas went unanswered. All Mr. Jasper could think about was the coin, and trying to keep it safe and away from anyone or anything that would attempt to steal it from him. He cowered in fear, clutched the coin in his hand with a death grip-like vice, and threw his bedsheets over his head. From outside of his sleeping quarters, which were behind his store, passers-by could only hear his screams and pleas. The next day, the town's sheriff and doctor, along with a small group of worried townsfolk, knocked and knocked again at Mr. Jasper's back door. No response. The sheriff took out his gun and shot through the door's lock, allowing him to enter Mr. Jasper's bedroom. They called out his name, not seeing anyone inside. No answer. Then they noticed the shape of a body covered up on the bed. The sheriff reluctantly pulled down the bedsheet, worried about what he might find, and he was shocked at what he saw. Mr. Jasper was dead all right, but his body was eerily a dark blue in color. The doctor approached the body and noticed that the body's hands were clasped tightly together. He had a hard time of it, but the doctor managed to pull apart the hands, revealing the shiny silver coin, which had appeared to have been clasped so tightly and for so long that it had penetrated the surface of the skin and was embedded into the palm of his hand. The doctor explained that Mr. Jasper likely died from Argyria, which is poisoning from silver that builds up from extended exposure and from entering the body, which turns the skin a dark blue color. The cursed silver dollar continued its malevolent journey, now tarnished by the blood of those it had claimed. Well, no, that was fun, wasn't it? This is the first in a series of stories documenting this evil coin's trail of death and destruction as it rolls along throughout history. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel, smash the like button, and hit the bell button to be notified when the next chilling episode in the Cursed Coin series drops. Oh, one more thing. I check my pockets in your change jar very carefully going forward. The coin could be coming for you next.